Hi, welcome. Um, this is Fifi Manfred um, on YouTube. One of those times again, very excited to be here with you. I'm grateful to have you. My name is Fifi Manfred. This is Fifi Manfred on YouTube. And guys, before I go on, like I always do, I want to say thank you very much to you, to everybody that subscribed. Now we have 4,000 subscribers to the channel. That is huge. And I'm grateful. 4,000 subscribers to the channel. That is huge. That is huge. That's very, very huge. Trust me, this has just been consistently for about eight months, even less. In fact, proper job has been done in just about the last five months or so. And for us to be here, I want to say I'm grateful to everybody. Everybody, please. If you've just watched the video and just chanced on it, whatever the case has been, I want to say thank you very much for choosing Fifi Manfred on YouTube. I'm spending just 30 seconds watching us. has been very, very important. has been very, very impactful to my life. And I want to say thank you to you. Thank you. Please do want to subscribe if you've not subscribed to the channel. Um, I would urge you to do that. Subscribe to the channel now. My name again is Fifi Manfred. I am a performance analyst. Of course, I'm by profession. Uh, I work in pharma, actually. And then also, I'm a performance analyst. And um, apart from that also, I do a lot of footballing analysis. In fact, sometimes a lot of cogent analysis as well. And you would love to be here. So do want to subscribe to the channel if you've not. And then, of course, like I always tell you to do, Turn on the notification button and do it. all. My name is Steve Human Fred. Today, it's actually a rant. It's a rant. It's 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 a big rant. <laughs> First of all, I remember in the last video I posted two days ago. In fact, yesterday, like yesterday around 4 p.m. But that's the last two videos I posted. And, and I did mention that. Brentford are going to be very, very difficult to play against. And I mentioned in there that if you look at the run of fixtures that Chelsea have, when you look at Arsenal, Torian Mosper, Man City, whatnot, the most difficult of them is going to be Brentford. And everyone was like, how is Brentford going to be the most difficult? Do you even have to crack your head to analyze Brentford? And I'm like, yo, it is not even about the name. It's about the threats they, they, they possess and they oppose that they bring to Chelsea. And you see, essentially in football, you want to control all the chaos and have enough to thwart the threats that your opponents bring in. And 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 via history and the number of games that Chelsea have played, not just under Mauricio Pochettino, under Grand Porter, under Thomas Tuchel, under managers that preceded Mauricio Pochettino, even it has been difficult to break down low block sides, even mid blocks. It has been tough. So I knew that going into this game, Chelsea would have to be near perfect. Now, when I saw the lineup, actually, um, I was in two minds, actually. And tactically, anytime I'm in two minds, it's not a good thing. So, first of all, I'm looking at the fact that, yes, we brought on Axel de Sassi. But the injuries that we had, Mihailo Modric and then Enzo, Enzo Fernandez, was a little bit worrying. Of course, given how we played also, it meant that we were not going to have enough wide threats in build-up. And, of course, we are not going to get any wide threats to help our wingers when they hold the width. But I think that centrally, that was the best in terms of defensive solidity. Was down the best. That's why I say I'm in two minds because there wasn't clear cut um, um, dichotomy between okay, the attacking is here, the defense is here, and, and this is where we find the middle ground and get a job done. So yes, I was excited for some parts, but I was worried for some parts of the game as well. And, and key amongst them was Enzo Fernandez's injury. So first of all, I expected that in this game, Chelsea were going to get Enzo Fernandez starting with Moise Caicedo. So that when Chelsea have the ball, Moise Caicedo is on. Enzo can push into the half spaces. Now, when you have Enzo pushing into the half spaces, he occupies those zones with Cole Palmer. And then you can have Conor Gallagher helping with the ones. Conor will be a little bit deeper. And with his um, intricate reading of the game, he can go in for a lot of the counter press in terms of a turnover. So, this is how I tactically envision the game, right? To go ahead. So, immediately, Enzo Fernandez is injured and is out of the team. Then you ask yourself, how does Mauricio Pochettino go? And this is how Mauricio Pochettino went in. Pochettino went in with Axel de Sassi, of course. We knew he had to come in because um, Brighton, Brentford were very, very physical. They were always going to be physical in this game. Um, Embuemo, Wesa, these are guys that are very, very physical. So when he brought on your man, Axel de Sassi, it means that Chelsea essentially had a three-back of Axel de Sassi, Thiago Silva, and Levi Kowal. Now, they the starting position of the game that we watched. It means that Sterling was a wing-back, together with Noni Madueke, and then two midfielders of, Copa, of, of Moises Caicedo and then um, Conor Gallagher. 
whilst you had Cole Palmer playing as an inside 10 with Nicholas Jackson. So that Cole Palmer will occupy the half spaces. So that every time, so this would have been ideal with Enzo Fernandez on the field of play. Then you take off somebody like Noni Madweke. Then nobody really plays in that zone for them. You deal with the back three to deal with the in terms of the threat and what's not from the other teams. Then over here, you make sure that you keep the width essentially with your extra centre back who come back and do the overlapping runs from the wide areas. Even if you want to do, don't want to do the overlapping runs on the wide areas from the centre back, it means that Moise Caicedo will get an extra job together with Mo, um, Enzo Fernandez with overlapping and overlapping runs, whilst Enzo will be fixated in occupying half spaces. Because if you watch the game in the first half, fairly balanced, the chances did come, but Chelsea really didn't occupy the half spaces. So the chances that Chelsea created were from individual brilliance, essentially from Cole Palmer. The brilliance of Cole Palmer. And you see, for somebody who has studied under Pep Guardiola, you will not be surprised to see him be um, one of the best manipulators of space. He was the best. He knows in what zone to stay, in which lane to stay, which lane to receive, which lane to play for. That is somebody that has studied under Pep Guardiola. So in the first half, these were some of the issues. No occupying of the half spaces, having loads of possession with no proper threat in there for the team. Um no cutting edge um, display in terms of in front of the goal. You know, funny enough, Chelsea creates the best chances, but it tends to have the worst shots at goal. So it's like you need a retainer and an XG monster in one. And when I say a retainer and an XG monster, you need somebody like Ellen Botaland who can retain the ball, make a lot of the ball like um, Nicola Jackson, but they end up scoring the goals as well. So it was tough. Let's you were going to have loads of the ball. It happened against West Ham. Um, it happened uh, against against Aston Villa. It happened against um, Nottingham Forest. I said it in the pre-match analysis. And in in this point, I go back and I blame Mauricio Pochettino, especially in the second half when Chelsea went down by a goal to zero. Then the system became too fluid. Mauricio Pochettino, he had a certain system that was a little bit fairly balanced, given that Enzo Fernandez was out, Modric was out. It was fa a fairly balanced midfield, a fairly balanced team to go ahead and get the equalizer. You have to stick with that. You don't throw on attackers and then end up making Chelsea playing in the last line with seven players in the last line. Where are they going to occupy? In football, the field has five zones, five zones. The extreme right, extreme left, then... Um, central areas and then the house spaces left and right those are the five zones of a football field but how come how is it that you play a football game in the dining members of the game you're in trouble you make it too fluid you have seven players in five zones definitely there isn't going to be enough space between them for them to receive the ball retain them and even create quality chances and in my opinion this was down to Mauricio Pochettino's letting himself down tactically he played a brilliant game against Arsenal but he comes here, he plays his game against Brentford, gets it right the first half, and in the second half, tends to shoot himself in the foot. I was raged. Super raged, because like, you don't play like this. Even if you have these injuries. And you see, Chelsea have lost a lot of the points as it stands now this season. So much so that it's going to be difficult to go back to Champions League. And you know the financial situation of Chelsea Football Club as it stands now. Without Champions League, how are you going to get the monies to run the club? Who are you going to sell? And this is not even about just going to splash money in January and going to get Victor Oshimi or Ivan Tony. I don't think there's a core shot in. I don't think that Chelsea has become a, a weak club or what's not. I mean, it's, it's it's ridiculous to think of to think of that. But really, Mauricio Pochettino had this game there to take. Look at that chance missed by Mark Kukera. Again, proper XG. But where is ball retention? When he gets in front of post, they there they go being jittery. And Marco Kukurea couldn't find the back of the net. You want to build on something. You win three, you draw one, you want to start building. But you go down the drain like this. And then how do you get this job done? So for me, I look at this game and I said, I said it. I look at this and I see Mauricio Pochettino panicked in the second half. He panicked in the second half. There was no reason for Mauricio Pochettino to panic in the second half. Absolutely no reason to panic in the second half. In fact, going into the second half, he had to be much more relaxed. And then still control the game like he was doing in the first half. I know they have controlled games most of the times without this. But those games that you played in the past, there was no Cole Palmer. There was no Kani Chukwemeka. 
who could hold on to these balls. You manage to control games like this, and then you throw it away. I was raised. I mean, like, tactically, brilliant first half, shambolic second half. And it is down to Mauricio Pochettino. Down to him. And for me, I have my takes on Mauricio Pochettino. The tactics he wants to deploy, they are there. But execution is going to be a big deal. Whilst he's waiting for execution, he needs to get these things done. There have been a lot of points that have been lost as it stands now. High exits, low ball retention in terms of the opposition, um, um, inside the opposition box, um, a lot of possession, but nobody occup occupying the half spaces to receive the ball in those dangerous areas. It's just Cole Palmer. Cole, when Cole Palmer gets on the ball, um, he's finding the passes, but nobody's really able to do anything with the ball. You play in that system where Madueke and Sterling keep the width, but nobody support them from out wide. It's a big deal. And of course, the defensive frailties as well on the turnovers. Shambolic. Shambolic. And I think that Chelsea really needs to sit up. Chelsea needs to sit up. That game against Stodium is going to be mouth-watering. And I can't wait, honestly. Guys, um, I need to say thank you. Um, this is just all what time will allow me to go through. I mean, it was just proper rant. Proper rant about Chelsea and where they've got into. I'm, I'm grateful, guys. I'm, I'm still grateful. Grateful for your support. Bye.